この思いを消してしまうにはまだ人生長いでしょうやり残してることをやり直してみたいから Hello! We are looking today at a very special knife with a very special steel. Well, I think so anyway. So, this is a Roselli Knives Bear Claw. It's a beautiful little、um, tiny fixed blade,、uh, mainly a sort of a wood carving knife, I would suggest. The thing about this steel is that it is in Roselli's 64 to 66 Rockwell UHC Ultra High Carbon Woots Steel. So, a little bit of information comes with the、um, knife on the back of the sheath, really, really cool.、Um, UHC steel originates from legendary Woots Damascus blade steel. The outstanding cutting properties of UHC steel results from its hardness, HRC 64 to 66, and numerous biting carbides. UHC blades hold up longer than ordinary carbon steel blades. So, I chucked it into the Z Knives app, and all they have on it is it's got between 1.5 and 2% carbon, and that's it. Bit of a mystery. So, this is the factory edge of the knife. So, it is currently slicing paper like a demon, very, very nicely. It's a much smaller blade, so it's、um, probably going to have the whole thing get used in the test. It's a、um, pretty much a scanty grind with a slight micro bevel in the end. So, it's a、um, probably. Oh, let's have a look here. Formic card, reveal the secrets. Right, so the Scandi grind itself looks like it's about 20 degrees per side. Sitting quite snugly in there.、Uh, between 20 and. yeah. Yeah, about 20 degrees or so per side,、uh, you, according to my Tormek card, which, you know, isn't. And、it's not an atomic microscope, so we'll see.、Um, but yeah, what I'll do is I'm going to use the factory edge first, and I'm going to maybe put something a little bit different on it using the KME. This was sent in by Brad. Brad often sends in knives for me to check out and look at, so thank you again, Brad. Let's see what pure basic carbon steel can do when it's ratcheted all the way up to 64 to 66 on the Rockwell scale. So,、uh, as we've seen before, that can be quite impressive. Carbon steel, simple carbon steel,、uh, the a i g a m i steels, those sorts of things, great steel. So,、um, really interested to see how this、uh, Roselli knife goes. Woots, who knows? Let's do a rope cut test. I'm going to cut the twisted sisal rope until it no longer slices a held sheet of paper. Let's get into it. So, 150 cuts with the factory edge. Now, that was not a pleasant cut. It's the, when you got a real little micro bevel, it held its edge for a good long time. So, it's promising for the steel because a little micro bevel getting pushed through rope,、um, you know, it's, it's, it can be a little bit like that sometimes rather than like that. And it actually held its edge for longer. Like, I was surprised every time I tested it that it kept cut slicing the paper because you got to 150 and it no longer does it.、Um, I think that's an ideal type of edge for this type of knife because it's very, very high rockwell hardness, may mean that it's a bit brittle. What I'm going to do, and I've got Brad's permission to mess with it just a little bit, I'm going to back the edge up just slightly. I'm not even sure what degrees it'll be just yet.、Um, I'm thinking maybe if it's just 18 or 19, just to give it a little bit more of a taller bevel, I think it'll cut through the rope easier, but it may lead to a more fragile edge. So,、um, I'm going to be a bit modest in how I approach it. If it's, I don't think I'll be going to 17 or anything like that.、Um, because, you know, the higher Rockwell carbon steels like this could be a little bit adverse to twisting and, and you know, the other things you might do when you're carving with a knife.、And、this is a wood carving knife. So I would wager that it had the optimum bevel for that task to begin with. But I'm going to sharpen it and see where I go and see if I can improve the numbers or not.、Um, 150 with、uh, this factory edge, well, 
Factory edges are a bit of an unknown, so I'm not too sure what to make of that. So we'll see if I can get something a bit more uniform and give that a try too. Oh, in case anyone was interested, um, I've just whacked it on the Tormex strop and that little micro will strop straight back to being paper slicing sharp, so. So that's pretty cool. But I'm gonna do a slight resharpen, a little bit of a bevel mod and see if I can get better edge retention against rope without sacrificing too much of that durability. So what I've done is, sort of sticking with what the literature said, whether it's you know accurate or not, that it's got sort of um, coarser carbides or whatever they said, I've gone and put a 21 degree edge on that Scandi edge. So it's like a 21 degree micro bevel, I guess you would call it. A little bit, maybe sort of twice the size that it was before it was just a really thin little white line, a proper little tiny micro, maybe like a 26 degree per side micro. Now it's down to 21 using the KME. Uh, in terms of grits, I went through until 1500 and then I've gone, uh, gone and done a, a Tormek strop. So it's using the Tormek paste, which is about 3000 grit on leather. So, you know, 1500 to 3000 grit, 21 degree micro bevel. So should be a bit more of an aggressive cutter, but as I said before, Roselli's initial edge is probably best for actually talking on wood as a carving knife, if that's what you're using this for. So at any rate, we're going to do the rope cut test again that it is very very sharp at the moment we are going to cut rope until it no longer does that let's get to it Alright, so that was 225 with my slightly steep edge. This is the kind of steel I think if I went to like 17 degrees on this um, and maybe mirrored it or something like that, it'd cut like a beast. You'd get to like 400 or 450, but it's not my knife and I'm just trying to operate as much under the intended purpose of the knife as I can. If I put a 17 degree edge on this with, this, with a steel this hard, 64 to 66, you're probably going to have some pretty significant rolling and chipping when the owner, when it goes back to him, tries to, you know, do his woodcrafting stuff. So, uh, as it is now, it's as far as I'm happy to push it, uh, 225. What we are going to do, so right now, it's definitely skipping along the surface of the paper and making tear cuts. We're going to see what stropping does in, in terms of getting that edge back. Carbon steel shouldn't be a problem. Right, so it's a simple strop on each side. Let's just have a little look and see how it improves. Pretty much back to square one. And I mean, I could probably do and even pushing through the rope again feels great. So it just goes to show that like, my rope cut test, it's not everything. Because 
with a few seconds I have probably reset at the edge. Edges gradually do fatigue, dropping them over and over again. You eventually do need to remove some of that steel, but really, if you were using this as your you know, primary knife and you had a belt and maybe a stick of compound with you and you're out doing your bushcrafty thing, you'd probably be able to rejuvenate it more or less, you know, every you know, three hours or so after use, just take your belt off and a few of those and you're probably back to square one and it'd last you like your whole trip. So very, very cool. Um, a really a lot of, I think there's a lot of merit in just keeping simple carbon steels, uh, especially for fixed blades and stuff, because as I said, they're really easy to resharpen. Even at 64 to 66, this wasn't a pain to sharpen at all. It was actually totally fine. Um, and yeah, stroppability, all that good stuff. Um, and yeah, really good edge performance as well. And you know, this is, you know, this is $120 in Australia, I think, which for a, you know, largely handmade product from Finland, um, with a really really good carbon steel really really cool So I would definitely put this in the class of steels as like the the super blues and the agamis and that sort of thing Like just a good simple carbon steel that you can probably get a great deal of life out of if you if you modify the edge you know, To whatever your needs are. All right guys. I'll catch you all in the next video. Goodbye <laughs>